Good day, folks. In light of increased interest in Earth's magnetic reversal, we're going to answer some of your most asked questions. First, with more events happening as our field weakens, why do these solar events seem to sometimes affect air travel, sometimes affect power systems or electrical fires, or sometimes affect storms? Well, indeed, it appears a bit of a crapshoot in terms of where the disruption will be seen. For example, in June 2015, we saw six tropical cyclones air travel halted in New Zealand and the solar impulse plane had its batteries fried, all from one storm. As we saw in October 2015, sometimes storm activity and things like electrical explosions and transformer fires occur in close proximity with no effect on air travel. Sometimes it's just about the power grids, other times it's all about the weather. The only thing we know is that the biggest events like air disruptions and major grid trouble are tied to the solar events, and the uptick in all types of electrical issues during solar storms is notable. At this time, we're not able to determine what part of the world or what type of disruption is most likely to be seen. Not every solar storm produces these events, but all the big events seem to occur during the solar storms, sort of like how all thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. The timing is where we get our clues. Just have to keep watching. A terrific question is why is the magnetic field weakening the most over the Western Hemisphere? You can find a number of explanations for things like the weak magnetism over the South Atlantic anomaly, from core flows to water content in the atmosphere and lithosphere. And while we won't attempt to explain the weak field genesis in that location, it is likely that the weakening that we are currently seeing in the Western Hemisphere is due to the movement of the poles, the source of the field as far as the above ground world is concerned. And with one pole moving towards Siberia and the other coming up in the Indian Ocean, we have both poles moving away from Brazil, away from the Caribbean, away from Argentina, away from Florida. This may be a simple matter of distance from the source, the strongest field, and indeed, the lone place the fields are getting stronger on Earth is located in the Indian Ocean just astride of the hypothetical pole meeting place from our previous videos. Field source leaves the Western Hemisphere, so does the field strength. Makes sense. One of my favorite questions, can space weather affect my health? Forgetting the fact that the published literature suggests mass extinctions are linked with Earth's magnetic reversal events, what can we know about individual events on a daily or weekly basis? When these solar flares or CME impacts occur, even the events that penetrate Earth's magnetic field really don't get much past the atmosphere. Without diving too much into the backstory, which is covered in detail at suspiciousobservers.org under the Humans and Electromagnetism section of the premium content, we do know that solar plasma can deliver dangerous levels of radiation to airline passengers and potentially even those on the ground at high latitudes. However, indirect human effects are also possible. Space weather can affect the Schumann resonance, induce electric currents, cause infrasound, and perturb magnetic fields. Scientists have seen that stroke and heart attack risks are affected, along with all blood pressure-related issues. Mood, headaches, seizures, flare-ups of various disorders, all affected by these events. On a macro scale, we see pregnancy rates, birth rates, crime rates, and a host of other indices appear to fluctuate with either short or long-term solar cycles. Although it has come out over decades from biologists to chemists to physicists, taken together, we have a vast amount of information suggesting that these solar events absolutely do affect our health. Space energy is a strange thing. They don't call it lunacy for nothing. The last question we'll address in this video is how long do we expect this event to last? Well, that one is tough, and it depends on what you're really asking. Scientists will tell you that reversals can take hundreds of years to complete and that there can actually be multiple reversals taking place within one event. But knowing something might end 200 years from now is not really any consolation when the magnetic field is causing problems above your head. The reversal may happen in a matter of weeks, or it may take centuries. We just don't know. But the better question is how much more weakening have we had since the 2010 report said we had lost 15%, and how much further before we're in trouble? At 5% field loss per decade, we should be approaching 20% down, assuming the field hasn't started weakening even faster. Given 2015 and 2016 thus far, one might speculate that the assumption would be incorrect. 